Well, good afternoon, and welcome to another chapter in the Veterans Forum. Uh, today is the 28th of May, 2014. My name is Bob Stevens. I've had the honor of producing and hosting this show for quite a few years. Today we're coming to you from the studios here in Derry, New Hampshire. Before I start the program, uh, formally at all, I'd like to remind each and every one of you guys and gals and maybe your friends, if any of you veterans have any need or feel you have a need for help, there's a special number, 211, throughout the state. If you call that number, you'll be in touch with a set of counselors or helpers. Uh, th the list is endless to, to make sure that you get the help that you want to need. And don't be afraid to ask for it, buddy. It's there. Well, getting back to today, we have another good show. I think every one of them is the same. We all had the same purpose. Each one of us had a little different way of doing it. I'll ask Tom to come and introduce himself, give you some idea where he was now, and then we'll go back and find out how he came to be, okay? Tom, if you would, would you pronounce your last name, spell your last name, identify where you live right now, sure. branch of service, dates of service, and whatever else you'd like to add before we get started. Uh, Crane is the last name, C-R-A-N-E, and I live in uh, Meredith, New Hampshire, um, and I've been in the uh, Lakes region there for about uh, 30, um, f almost 35, 40 years well, now. make it permanent. Uh, right. I think I'll, I'll stay there. I love it there. Um, I'm a uh, financial advisor with an office in Laconia. Uh, I was in the um, Army, uh, went through uh, uh, infantry. I was through ROTC at uh, St. Lawrence University in upstate New York, uh, went through infantry officer basic uh, at Fort uh, Benning. Uh, Hold just a second. You, you, you're miles ahead of me. One, okay. one, one more question, if you will. Uh, what were your uh, dates of service? Um, I went, went into active duty in October 9th of uh, 1969, and to be honest, I'm not completely clear on the date that I, uh, the day I left Vietnam was also the day I left the service, and that was roughly the early August 1970. A good year. It was Never a mind good, the day, it's a good year. <laughs> good good year to be out. <laughs> became a PFC, proud free civilian. <laughs> That's right. Thank you. Okay, now that we know what you are today, very briefly, I'd like to go back and find out how you came to be this. For example, uh, where and when were you born? How was your life growing up before you went into service, in grammar school, high school, or college, and what did you then decide you wanted to do? Well, I, uh, I was uh, born and raised for the first 13 years in the Bronx, New York city. I was a city kid. Um, we moved out to the country, as we called it, uh, when I was 13, out to um, a town called Bayville, Long Island, which now I certainly don't consider country, but <laughs> leaving the Bronx, we, <laughs> we <laughs> thought we were at the, the end of the you world. And no, yeah, no, and, and no street lights. <laughs> you know, how do you go to sleep at night? Uh, and uh, from, uh, from there, I, like I said, I went up to uh, College in uh, upstate New York, St. Lawrence University. Excuse me, I'm, I'm gonna, you're jumping ahead. What I'm trying to do, remember that old show, This Is Your Life? Yeah. That's what I'm trying to do, is recapture your life. Like, for example, you were born, uh, brothers and sisters, anybody in your family in the service, what you do in school, high school. So we get a feeling for Sure, what, sure. What, what made you you? Okay. Uh, I uh, uh, had a sister born just a year after. Uh, I was, and then another brother um, uh, three and a half years later after 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 me, and like I said, we we grew up in the Bronx. Uh, my uh, dad and mom divorced uh, when I was about thirteen, and uh, dad remarried, had another uh, daughter, uh, another sister of mine who uh, we're close uh, with, uh, Mary Lou, and. Uh, 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 my dad uh, was in the service in World War II. Oh. He, uh, he went uh, into the Army Air Corps. 
uh, went through training and was overseas uh, right at the very end of the war. And uh, um, I don't believe he, he flew um, any combat missions, but he was, he was in Paris uh, right at the end of the war and, and through those early days after liberation and stuff, and, yeah, and a, lot of stories, uh, yeah. a lot of stories uh, about that. Um, and, uh, any brothers or uncles? Yes, well, yeah, I, I um, actually both my uh, mother and father were only children, so I didn't have any direct uncles, but okay. we had plenty of, of friends who were uncles, and, and most of them um, uh, had uh, military service. There was one, uh, one family that was particularly close, uh, especially uh, one, one uh, member of the, of the family, uh, Richmond Boaz, uh, who uh, we called Coke. For some reason he had gotten that nickname. And uh, he was extremely close to both my mom and, and my dad and, and a, a great influence on us uh, for uh, all of our growing up years, okay. right until he passed away in uh, in 2000, um, and uh, he um, he served in World War II and um, uh, uh, was saw a, a lot of combat over in uh, uh, Malaysia in in that area uh, far east, in the Far East, east. Yeah, yeah, Near East, I guess, yeah. The, uh, and uh, uh, both of his brothers, uh, one uh, was a Marine uh, and the other uh, was, I think it was Coast Guard, but uh, one story we always heard is the, uh, the brother in the Coast Guard uh, used to drive the, um, uh, you know, the uh, not the PT boats, but the, 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 the yeah, the landing craft and, and actually uh, put his brother uh, out on, I believe it was Okinawa. Wow. Uh, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah, for lunch. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and uh, and they had some, you know, some some stories from, yeah, from their experiences. A, a good interest. Now, you I guess, in high school about now, how was going through school before you went to college? You said St. Helens, I think. What was your life like in then? Uh, well, uh, uh, I, you know, I played sports in, in high school. I, I played um, football, basketball, and baseball in, in, in high school, and uh, fortunately uh, decided to, to play football in college. I almost didn't, and uh, I, I, I did well, was captain of the team, and had a, had a great experience with that. What school? Uh, St. Lawrence University, oh. upstate New York, and... Um, uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, maybe I'm going to jump ahead, but I'll tell you how I, I, I got into ROTC. Cause That's we, what we'd like to hear. Um, I, uh, uh, my dad, uh, you know, had taken me up there for the college visit and stuff, and, and I, I'm sure he was the one that dropped me off. And um, we, uh, you know, I was talking to him, and I said, Dad, geez, i got to decide what to do with courses. And, you know, one of the decisions is... Um, you know, I'm not sure whether to take ROTC or not. And he said, uh, you know, Tommy, there's a draft. You're going to go in. You want to go in as an officer. Amen. You don't want to go in as an enlisted man. I said, yeah, but Dad, what about this Vietnam stuff? And he said, ah, Tommy, that'll be long over by the time you graduate. <laughs> this was I 1964. My, I lost my calendar. <laughs> that was 19, September 1964. Uh, and, of course, I graduated in June of 68, and Vietnam was only, right. <laughs> only hitting its peak then. Um, so I, 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 I went into ROTC not to be candid, not any out of any great patriotic common sense yeah just uh you know that was just like you know it was it was another course it was a way to fill my um military obligation which we all had um and uh you know as you know uh, bob those were uh even even at our very remote school, uh, St. Lawrence University is uh, right up by the St. Lawrence Seaway in, in upstate New York, mm -hmm. pretty pretty far up, pretty remote, pretty conservative school 
too, I guess, generally. But even there, there were uh, there were protests and uh, oh, you yeah, know yeah. people people. Um, uh, 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 protesting against the war and uh, setting up little demonstrations when we did our little marches around the, mm -hmm. the, the quad at the, at the school. Uh, and then, uh, 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 you know, from there, uh, I uh, uh, graduated, uh, had the summer off, um, I had one of the best months of my life in September of, of 69, uh, you know, sailed out on a, on a racing boat for a while and just, just had a great month and then reported for, uh, for duty in October. Okay, when, when did you report and how did you get there? Well, I, uh, uh, I reported at uh, Fort Benning, uh, Georgia. Uh, Georgia, yes, Georgia, and I, I drove down. I, uh, uh, my dad had a car, and uh, he was ready to replace it, so I, um, I inherited uh, his car, or kept it for a while, actually. I wound up selling it, and we, we you know, settled up with him at that point uh, later on, but a little Carmen Ghia, and uh, I drove it down and uh, reported in for uh, basic training. Um, luckily, there were a couple of uh, other uh, people I knew from St. Lawrence uh, who uh, reported at the same time I, I, I did. All Rotsies? All um, yes, yeah. Okay. Both both of the other guys were ROTC, and we uh, 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 went through off, you know officers' basic training okay. together. Can you stop right there? Sure. The big question. And people give me all kinds of answers. <laughs> What was your first two or three days going from civilian to military as far as <laughs> what you can talk about and what is funny, <laughs> sad, or otherwise? Well, uh, yeah, I mean, like, like with, with all of us, obviously, the, the transition to, uh, to military um, from civilian life was, was uh, pretty, uh, uh, pretty dramatic. Uh, one of the big things was, is uh, it's the first time I think a lot of us, and certainly for me, were around such a wide variety of people, okay. you know, Southerners, Westerners, yeah, exactly, different, uh, all different types and, 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 and everything, city kids and country kids, and, uh, you know, you got, you got to, to know, uh, know all of, all of them. But uh, for me, the the more important part of uh, of the training came later. Uh, you know, uh, uh, and I was again kind of uh, uh, cajoled into this a little bit for, with some of my friends into 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 going into airborne and and uh, then ranger school, mm -hmm. which uh, uh, especially particularly ranger school, I was very grateful to have. Uh, have gone through that uh, experience. I certainly wasn't at the time. Okay, can you build up to that as to how you progressed from uh, raw, what you were, first John or second John when you first went in, first lieutenant, second? Oh, I was a second lieutenant. We okay. all go in as second from lieutenant there on back that, then. What was your progression and, and what were the responsibilities and you had to have, plus how did you do them? Uh, well, Is that I, a fair question? Sure. Uh, what what uh, you know as a second lieutenant we we went in and we were in training that's why I say we for the first probably six months or more uh, was all training for for us because okay. we went right from uh, officers basic training um, which I believe was only six weeks and then we went through uh, two weeks of, of airborne school uh, down at Benning, also right there. What uh, prompted you to go to Airborne? Well, like That's I said, a Dave, question. You know, it yeah, it was. It was. Uh, I, I guess. Um, uh, p kind of peer pressure, you know, the other guys that I was with were all going and, and like yeah, it. exactly, and uh, all right, and um, uh, airborne school, I, I to be, I, I was scared to death to jump. I <laughs> don't think you were alone. I know I've it. But others have said the uh, same. Yeah, no, I, I don't have any problem <laughs> saying that, and, and I've always felt like one of the great things about having been through jump school and 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 jumped out of a plane as it as it turned out ten times. Is I never have to jump out of one again. Yeah. <laughs> I, the parachute never fails. So you had no complaints. Exactly, exactly. Um, uh, 
So uh, it was uh, it, it was uh, the camaraderie of, of the group that we had. We had a, a, a good yeah. core group that had developed <laughs> in um, in the officers' basic training, yeah. uh, and and so we kind of wanted to stay together. And I and you learned to become a, a unit. You were no longer a single guy. Right, we were we were we were, we, it. We, were we we became kind of a, a, a core group there, and and um, you know and stayed together. I mean, I always say that uh, uh, when I signed up for Ranger School, uh, the person who later turned out to became my my Ranger buddy um, uh, uh, told me I was signing up for the uh, you know they put out a, a list and said anybody who was going to stay down for Thanksgiving you know sign up and we'll make sure we have dinner here and he was telling me I was signing up for Thanksgiving dinner but really it was the <laughs> sign up sheet for Ranger School but I probably was leaning that way anyway and and again like I said I uh, I was I was grateful I went through that I was uh, uh, we heard so many stories and back then Ranger School was actually I think the toughest school in the army. We, uh, when we when we started, we uh, we we had uh, you know the top guys from the Navy SEAL school would went through Ranger School also, mm -hmm. and and at the end of it, they told us that, that that the Ranger training was was a lot harder. It was very rigorous training back then. And uh, can you take some time and tell us about two or three parsons or uh, as you phase through it because a lot of people have no idea what you talking about right right Ra ranger school was uh, uh, like i said it was it was it was designed uh, and particularly at that time uh, you know rangers were the based on the old rogers rangers you know back in the in french and indian american revolution uh uh, uh the uh, you know elite uh, a force, uh, kind of unfortunately, uh, at during Vietnam, uh, they weren't. We didn't operate as Ranger units. What they were trying to do was use the Rangers to, um, uh, and the people who had been through Ranger School, to raise the level of competency, if you want to call it that, throughout the Army. They, okay. they thought it was better if they, rather than take 30 guys that had been through Ranger School and keep them in as, as one unit, we can spread them out and, you know, and, and like put them. Like salting a mine, you get exactly. a, everybody gets benefit from it. So, and, 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 uh, and put them with, uh, 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 you know, with, with, with many units in, in, in the service. So uh, it was designed to, uh, to uh, max out people's capability. Okay. Um, uh, I'm, I, uh, it's funny, I, uh, one of the guys, one of these uh, people uh, I was just talking about, a guy named Steve Riggs, who I went to college with, and air, you know, officers basic, and then airborne school and ranger school. Uh, we've recently reconnected, and um, uh, he he had done a uh, a little bit of a uh, what I guess they would now call a blog, or what might, we might have called a journal that he wrote okay. a, a few months after after we had finished airborne and ranger school, and he he sent it to me, and it was uh, it was really fun to go back and and read that um but uh we we uh uh you know they they would uh, take us in um uh, in the first phase which was at a at right in uh fort benning georgia they they were trying to i think basically try to break us down. I, I started to say, I, I, he, he mentioned the numbers too, I think we started with 236 people and at the end I think 97 of us got our, the rest our, our, got our, got our tab, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, uh, we, uh, we started in, uh, in Fort Benning and it was uh, intense, intense um, uh, physical 
uh, uh, activity, endurance. Uh, I, I remember like we had just finished airborne school where we did a lot of running there, you know, two and a half mile runs, airborne shuffle, and um, I, I, we didn't have any problem with that. But I remember my first morning we go out and, you know, we would get up long before dark, you know, like four in the morning mm -hmm. and uh, line up and do a little PT and then we'd head out on a run. And, and we start out running and we're running at what I consider a full-out sprint, and they kept this up for five miles. <laughs> and, <laughs> Dragging Charlie home. <laughs> exactly. Well, but they they're out there to try to break you down. Right, and uh, I never forget my ranger buddy and I, uh, uh, Bill Graves. Uh, uh, he was an offensive tackle from Wake Forest and weighed about 280 when we started. I. I was uh, even a little heavier than I am now probably. Uh, I was probably 235, 240 pounds when we started. And so he and I, at that first five mile run came. The B and I came <laughs> right down. We were, we were lagging <coughs> seriously. And then we, obviously we kept that up and then uh, we would go through an obstacle course and, and, and just, just very intense training from, uh, like I said, usually four in the morning till at least 11 or so at night and then, you know, get a few hours sleep and do the same thing the next day. Uh, very limited rations and, and so forth. Uh, and, then, uh, the, and then the second part of that first three week, it was broken into two, uh, three, three week phases. The, you know, the phase at, at uh, Benning, then a phase up in the mountains of Dahlonega, Georgia, and then a phase down in the swamps of uh, Florida at Eglin Air Force Base. And um, uh, the second part of the first phase was at a place ca called Camp Darby uh, at, at Benning, where we did a lot of patrolling and up night after night after night out, out patrolling. And again, I think part of what they were trying to, to, to teach us was that we could, um, we could go without food, mm -hmm. without sleep. Uh, uh, we could lay out in uh, horrible physical conditions. I remember, you know, laying out on a, you know, ambush patrol uh, uh, for hours and driving, driving rain with no, no now, shelter. Were you, did, I'm interrupt, but were you on these training, were you out to try and see somebody or, or locate a, an activity so that you yeah well, they, it, they would have role playing but this is for life right this was this was yeah this was was role playing but you know so we had they had an aggressor force that okay. that, that we would continually um, you know try to go after they had they had uh, troops play Okay. Uh, the, Did the you other alternate side. who would be the leader of the Absolutely, team? yeah. Well, everybody was well disciplined. A exactly, and well trained. You know, yeah. we had to, you know, establish a, a, a battle plan and a plan mm -hmm. of, uh, of of how we were going to uh, attack the objective. And um, obviously, this is in the days long before GPS is there. So map reading, being able to oh. handle a compass, and uh, was 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 critical. And oh. and and again, that that's where I felt like it was it was advantageous because I I uh, learned um, how to read a map extremely well. Yeah. You know, during this phase, um, and then then we uh, after after that period, um, uh, we went up to the uh, mountains of. Uh, of uh, Delonica, and we learned uh, 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 knot tying, how to do uh, repelling and that. Oh, and then a lot of repelling, a lot of mountain climbing. Um, I, uh, I'll, uh, uh, I, w I was very fortunate to have uh, chosen the uh, the ranger buddy that I did. I always feel like that was one of the one of the best decisions of my of my. Life. And you uh, approve it. Uh, 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 one of the things they told us, as you know, they as as we you know, once we were assigned the class, we knew when we were going in. They said, try to pick somebody that you uh, get along with, but also somebody who your size compatible with because one of the things that 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 uh, we were told we needed to do was uh, to put our buddy on our back and rappel down so 
uh, Bill. He's the skinniest guy in town. <laughs> exactly. So Bill was was <coughs> didn't, didn't want to ask anybody because he he didn't want to put that on anybody. <laughs> you got to take this 280 man pound man Hadn't down the mountain. Had he gone down a little bit? <laughs> yeah. Well, he had he had by the time we got the Delonica, absolutely. But uh, and I was hesitant to ask him, you know, for that reason. I didn't know if I could take this guy that died on the but fortunately you know as people paired up we were kind of kind of left and um so finally i you know i knew i had to be the one because like i said he wouldn't i said you know hey bill do you want to be ranger buddies and he said geez yeah i said i, I didn't know of anybody <laughs> want to <laughs> take me but uh but you did it yeah and and um and like i said it was uh it was uh it was a light, light-changing experience. Yeah, he, uh, he's probably the best person I've ever, I've ever known. Um, you know, we talked about mountain climbing and, and uh, uh, you know, the Army did everything, you know, well. Uh, they, they taught you well. I, I really do, uh, uh, like I said, I'm grateful for that. And I, I thought the training was great. And, um, you know, when we did mountain climbing, we, you know, were given <coughs> ropes. And uh, I remember, you know, being up uh, on, a, on, a, on a mountain and uh, uh, got kind of stuck in a pickle. And I, you know, and, and we were, we would, uh, what they call belay each other. In other words, there'd be a rope and, you know, you, you could, you know, and I said, Bill, I got to take a chance here. You, you ready? And he said, I got you. And uh, sure enough, I, I, I had to take a, take a gamble and try to jump for a, a handhold and, and missed. <laughs> and uh, he and he had me and he, you know, and I said, geez, Bill, you okay down there? I said, I got to give my arms a rest. He said, you know, hang on. Anyway, you know, he, but it was it was more than that. We, you know, the the um, we would uh, uh, we would we would be up um, night after night, mm -hmm. and and finally we would get into some uh, logger. You know, night defensive position, logger positions, we used to call them, and uh, but we'd have to be out on watch, and and we'd be. So hungry. Most most of the time, when we were on patrol in Ranger School, like particularly up in you know at this Camp Darby or later on in Thelonica, and certainly down in in, in Eglin in Florida, uh, uh, we would we would be lucky if we had. I think we were given one C ration meal a piece a day, you know, for however long we were going to be out, but. We really didn't have enough room to pack that, so we were mainly getting by on less than that. You have to learn to live off the land. Well, we we did a little bit of that, but mostly we just starved. Yeah. <laughs> you know, to tell you the truth. I've been yeah. There. <laughs> well, I mean, again, I mean, I, I came out because I went in at about 240. I, I I left there at about 175, okay. 180 at the most. And not an ounce of fat. Not an ounce of fat, no. And uh, um, uh, but so to keep each other sane. Uh, while we were going through this, we used to sit and and uh, you know we were on on watch together, and we 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 talk to each other, tell each other stories, uh, and and usually they were about meals that we remembered from yeah. from growing up, yeah, and nice and, and, and I mean I I heard about Thanksgiving dinner at you know at his grandmother's house enough that I felt like I'd been there. Yeah. You know he would he would he would tell me the story, and I I would of course tell him you know my stories from from growing up and what what Thanksgiving was like at my house, and uh, you know we had just just come to you know rely on each other. You, you become you, each other. Yeah, exactly, enormously. And then a, as we went through, um, we, we found that, you know, like I said, when we started these five-mile runs, we were, you know, we were lagged tremendously. And then the end of the first uh, three-week phase, um, we got up at, I always said we got up yesterday because we got up at like 11 o'clock, <laughs> you know, at night, and we went on a on a forced march all night. Uh, and again, it was supposed to be a march, but it was at a at a at a at a ridiculously fast walking pace. I think we had a world class <laughs> walking yeah, champion well, leading us, 
<laughs> and and so most of us ran, mm -hmm. you know, the whole way and dog trot. Yeah, yeah just a yeah. you know just a trot uh, the whole way just to try and keep up. And when we finally got to the uh, to the destination point. I, you know, I noticed, gee, I wasn't last anymore. I was actually in the first group, and Bill was, you know, right, right, you know, close in up front. And, uh, you know, and as, as time wore on, and again, I think those reserves helped us because, you know, as, as people, you know, went through that, we were able to... Uh, you know, to continue, we, we maintain more strength and, right. and, and, you know, so over the course of the nine weeks, uh, we, uh, you know, we developed, uh, 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 you know, a lot more and, uh, uh, you know, finally at the end, uh, you know, at that, that last phase down in, uh, in uh, Eglin wow. in Florida, uh, we would be, you know, we, we would often get the radios or the machine guns, you know, we, just like you said, you know, we, we would alternate jobs, but as time went on, he and I, because we were, you know, some of the bigger guys in the, in the, in the, in the platoon, we would, uh, we would always get the machine guns or the radios, and then I remember finally at the end we were both carrying a radio and a machine gun and wound up carrying you know, because there was such a ethic to try to get everybody through mm -hmm. uh, that, uh, uh, you know, we would carry other guys' rifles or packs, too. I mean, we just, you know, we'd... That's a good comment. All of this time now, you had full pack, I would guess. Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah. Tell the people what a pack consists of. Well, you know, we we were in we were in winter ranger school, which I think was even harder <laughs> than in summer because it was it was freezing cold. Well, we didn't have snowshoes, but we we they uh, they made us carry, but nobody ever wore uh, what they call Mickey Mouse boots. They were these uh, giant, big white boots. They must have, uh, you know, they were here and they were solid. And stuff. Well, excuse me. The Tenth Mountain guys with them. I, I guess I think that's probably where they came from, and uh, they were uh, they were enormously heavy, and and they took up. That's why we couldn't fit, a a, 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 you know, one even one sea ration meal for every day. We couldn't fit it in our pack because these, 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 these boots took up so much room. But you know, we'd pack in as much food as we had. Mm -hmm. We, we again, this was winter. We we didn't have any sleeping bags or anything. The only thing we we were we we could carry was a uh, a little uh, rolled up. Um, uh, what they call a poncho liner, yeah. uh, you know, which is just a, a thin liner, and that's that was the only thing we had to sleep in. Windbreak about all. Right, exactly. Yeah, and I'm not even positive how waterproof it was. I just, <laughs> I, I, you know, and I don't want to belabor. I think I've talked plenty about Ranger School, but okay, uh, sure. I just got one one <laughs> kind of funny story with it. Just reminded me of it with the blankets. Uh, we would, uh, if it got below a certain temperature. They would allow us to to, to to build a fire, you know, so we we oh, could. This is all cold camp. Excuse me. You were all cold camp up till then. Oh yeah, it was all we, we would go n night after night with no food, no in 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 freezing temperatures, you know, uh, uh, and uh, but if it if it dropped below. 25. I don't, I'm not sure what temperature they would allow us to to build the fire, and uh, so we'd build the fire. And uh, there were two two uh, smaller guys in our 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 platoon. We had the airborne platoon in Ranger School, and uh, 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 Hofmeister and Lopresti were these two guys. And we would we would come in, and uh, you know, and and the We'd finally, we'd get the fire started, and so we'd have to break, you know, who's going to do first watch, second watch. And and the, I don't know how it always happened, but these guys would say, um, we'll go ahead, uh, or why don't you guys take the first watch, you know, that way, which you always wanted, because then you didn't, you, you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have just, a, you know, an hour's sleep and then have to get up and then, so, so we said, okay, you know, because it always took a little bit to get settled down, so, okay, that was good. So we would take the first watch and these, you know, when we wake uh, uh, these two guys up and then they would, uh, they would go and uh, so Bill and I would, 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 you know, get up as tight as we could to the fire to get as much thing in. And, and I don't know why, how this happened every single night, but 
we would wake up in the morning and these two guys, when they finished their watch, would somehow get between us and the fire. Yeah. <laughs> We'd be outside freezing and they'd be, you know, all, yeah. all tucked Plus away warm. them heat too, buddy. That's what I mean. They, we, we were blocking the wind from them. <laughs> body <laughs> robbers. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's how you never forget their names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No matter where you go, they'll always be with you. Yeah, right, yeah. right. Now, as you're going through, you mentioned machine guns and what. Do you have any sort of special weapons training that gave you a, a, a little bit more advantage, if you will, as you're going, getting, become more proficient? Well, I think I think we learned to, you know, fire machine guns and and and, and you know, uh, actually we used an M14 most of the time in in training. Okay. Uh, you know, when we went to Vietnam, that was a problem. They didn't have enough of them. So, when you were in Vietnam, you used an M16, but we never. Yeah. Never had never had much training with the, with the M16. It was all with the M14s, you know, the older rifles. Um, I, we, you know, we, uh, like I said, you know, learning how to do rope bridges and uh, field antennas. I, you know, I remember how to, you know, set those up, and that was one of my first missions when I went to Vietnam was setting one of those up. Uh, you know, so we learned a lot of proficiency, a, a lot of hand-to-hand -hand combat, uh, 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 did, you know, a lot of. Pugil, pugil, pugil stick uh, work, you know, with the, you know, like bayonets, and uh, um, uh, but it was uh, it was the technical part of it, the, the map reading, the you know, learning how to to set up an operation and so forth, that I I think uh, helped us a lot. Oh, yeah. uh, so uh, and uh, I, you know, like I said, there I I. I uh, the, you know, there were a lot of stories from Ranger School, but that was, uh, it, it was a, it was a uh, very tough experience, but, but a great, great one experience. One more of Ranger School, the last one down in Florida. You've gone from the mountains and the snow down to swamps and snakes. Yeah. How was that reaction as far well, as being able to camouflage yourself? Well, uh, <clears throat> yeah, no, there, there, there were a lot of snakes. I'll, I'll, I'll maybe tell two quick steak okay. stories. Uh, one was uh, uh, we, uh, one night, uh, uh, you know, we would always be on the lookout for snakes and the, uh, the lane, the ranger uh, cadre, the, you know, the trainers uh, used to keep a, uh, a display uh, you know, at the at the headquarters, you know, with a, a rattler in there and a water moccasin and different. And they had lost their coral snake, which is the most deadly North American pretty snake. Pretty deadly. Yeah, very pretty. Uh, red on yellow will kill a fellow. <laughs> uh, and uh, we happened to find one one day out on parole patrol and uh, so we captured it you know and put it in a couple of sandbags and had it there and uh, again I, I, I can't describe uh, too much how how we would go without sleep day after I mean guys would would literally be falling down uh, uh, standing on their feet you know falling asleep on on their feet it was a very very frustrating time and um, and we finally get to uh, one of these night defensive our objective and we're we're at a night defensive and people can get a little bit of sleep you know we need to keep watch and we just settled in and all of a sudden the word got out that the coral snake was loose oh jeez <laughs> and what <laughs> do I <laughs> exactly guys slept on top of their pack or sat on top of their pack and didn't sleep and it was very 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 long night uh, without that without yeah, and the bird. repercussions are you guys haven't brought it in no, no, no. Just, just a lot of fear that we, somebody was he was going to find somebody in the middle of the night. But uh, luckily, we never saw that guy again. Uh, and then I, I'll, Easter Sunday, 1969, um, we saw, I believe it was like 39 water moccasins. We were out walking in swamp uh, mm -hmm. up that high and you know through and uh, as we were going there's water moccasin on your right there's two on your left and we would just walk right through uh, you know right right you didn't right bother you? no we we you know we 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 didn't bother them and fortunately oh, I know that. <laughs> yeah fortunately we uh, we were able to get through without anybody getting bit and you know alligators we'd go down the the river and in, in uh, in rubber rafts and same thing we'd have to watch for alligators and, and stuff one bite and you're the you're, you're right. the next bite exactly <laughs> exactly well, get out of that one okay now you're all through school now right. what 
Well, uh, then I went to uh, Fort Jackson, South Carolina, and I was a uh, training officer down there, uh, train uh, uh, enlisted men as they were going through, uh, they, had, they had finished their basic training and we were trying to train them to get them ready to, to go over to Vietnam. Uh, and Same thing you had, or not as rigorous? Not, not nearly as rigorous, not, not nearly as rigorous, no. It was uh, um, we kind of, uh, this was I believe ad advanced uh, infantry, it was an infantry, um, you know, training. Um, and you know, we, we work with, with, I was, you know, one of the uh, officers. I had a, you know, a platoon that I, mm -hmm. kind of, you know, took care of. And, uh, and uh, you know, we did training and, um, and we did that for um, uh, probably most of the summer, June, you know, which was a little warm in <laughs> Fort Jackson, June, July, and August. And then, like I said, September, um, I, you know, we had leave and then, um, went to Vietnam in October. Okay. Now, in that training, uh, part of it, uh, were you going into the bush? Did, did, did a lot of it on, on what to look for as far as booby traps, what not to see, what not to react to? It, it's a dumb question. No, it's not a dumb question, question, and they tried to do as much of that as possible, um, which, you know, I think some was helpful, but um, one of the things that I found, that, you know, as, since I've been back, as you talk to people who were in Vietnam, um, it was very different depending on where you, well, you served. Were you know, I, I hear some people talk, and I, I, I didn't recognize the way they operated I at all. I couldn't pronounce the name. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so we, uh, um, uh, you know, we did the training, but I, I think most of that stuff came after okay. after you were in country. Now, did you fly over or take a boat? Uh, oh, that's another smile. Yeah, well, you know, no, it's just I, I well, I somehow I had heard that when, you know, when you reported, they, uh, I, my my uh, my orders were to report to Travis Air Force Base in California, mm -hmm. and somehow I had heard through the grapevine that oh, you report in they. They, you know, put you through a little orientation there, and then you fly out a couple of days later. So I was not expecting to to leave, and I, you know, I had a, a fun week because you know I run, you know, uh, had a friend there in San Francisco, and we spent days there, and finally get on a bus and go out to uh, f uh, to uh, Travis Air Force Base and hand my orders to to where I was supposed to report, <coughs> and. They, Guy says, well, "You better hurry, Lieutenant. Yeah. Your plane's leaving, and <laughs> you're, you're almost missed your plane. You got to get down there. You got five minutes." And I just went white. Wow. Uh, I, uh, I I ran down. I called my mom. You know, let her know uh, that I was going, and I bought the Yokohama. And I bought the only pack of cigarettes I ever bought in my life. <laughs> Had a cigarette and and uh, got on the plane and and headed over. Uh, so it was. Uh, that Direct was, flight, or did you stop someplace like Okinawa and then down? Uh, actually, Anchorage, Alaska. Oh. We went over the top. Okay. So we, we stopped in Anchorage and uh, got out of the plane for a couple of minutes, not, not many, and, and uh, just refueled and loaded up and, and landed at uh, 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 Tonsonut Air Force mm -hmm. Base there outside of Saigon. And then how was your reception there coming in? Oh, was it hot or still? Oh, yeah, brutally hot. I mean, yeah. physically hot as well as shooting. Yes, at no, 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 no shooting where we landed there. I mean, every place I landed, I expected. So, oh God, this is yeah, this, this is, is the start of it. I mean, you know, I'll never, you know, I remember landing and uh, I was amazed that not everybody had had weapons. That people didn't look to be looking around. I was, you know, had my eyes every place. Three sixty all day <laughs> exactly. long. Exactly. I was I was looking under every bush and and everything. And 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 most people were 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 going as as they were. And uh, we we went to a. Um, uh, um, I, I keep saying resettlement, but I, you a know, a, 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 
excuse me? A kind of a repo depot? Yeah, just a, you know, where they, where they, where they kind of housed us yeah, until they, okay. you know, and, and there they, you know, I think they gave us a day or two to, to get acclimated to the time change and the weather. I mean, the, the weather, you know, they're, sure. you know, they're, to get off that plane and feel that, that, that tropical heat. You're stepping it, in with sauna bath. Exactly. I mean, that was, that was, you know, it was, it was a dramatic change. And of course, we're 12 hours uh, completely, you know, seven o'clock at night is seven o'clock over there, seven o'clock in the morning here. So your clock yeah, is, the com moon is, over there. <laughs> is completely, uh, completely turned around. And, um, uh, you know, and I, I, uh, uh, I, I ran into one of these guys that I talked to that we had gone through mm -hmm. officers basic and, and airborne and ranger school, uh, Steve Horn, and and he you know he told me where some of the people had gone, um, uh, but uh, you know unfortunately you know we went over there alone you know luckily I you know, like I said I ran into somebody at this uh, depot uh, for lack of a better term and. Uh, and then after a couple of days, I got my assignment up to uh, Chu Lai, oh. um, up north in I Corps, uh, uh, with the uh, uh, First Battalion, 46th Infantry, um, up there. And uh, 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 so, uh, same thing. I landed in Chu Lai, and I was expecting this is you know now I'm really in it. But again, Chu Lai was. Just you know, the, yeah, just, you know, it wasn't, uh, but I, I was very alert <laughs> and couldn't wait to get a weapon. I still didn't have a weapon. Oh? <laughs> yeah, no. They didn't no, no they, they didn't give us a weapon back there, and <clears throat> and, and and I didn't have one when we landed at uh, Chulai, but then I got, we got bussed out to the headquarters of, of our battalion. Uh, that's how we mostly operated at that time, in, 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 in probably in most of Vietnam, but certainly in our area, we, we operated generally in battalion size units. Did you have a sector you worked into? We were assigned a sector. As, uh, well, we, we, we had a, you know, and this was, this is where we, <laughs> we picked up some of the stuff that you were talking about, how to identify, uh, you know, different, you know, uh, punji pit, punji state oh, yeah. pit, you know, and stuff like that, uh, was they gave, they, uh, they gave us, uh, I don't think it was a week, but it was, you know, at least four or five days of orientation mm -hmm. uh, in the rear area in Chulai. Uh, that's where the rear area for our battalion was, was, was in Chulai, which was a, was a pretty good sized base. There were two hospitals there. Uh, it was pretty well defended. I mean, there'd be rockets that would come in periodically, but uh, it was, uh, it was generally a, what you would consider a rear area, and uh, uh, so uh, you know, after four or five days there, I got my assignment, um, and um, I believe it was then that I was told they were going to give me the recon platoon of of the battalion. The battalion was made up of. Uh, what we call f what we used to call four line companies a b c d alpha bravo charlie delta and those would uh, uh i think their nominal strength was supposed to be about 130 people typically they operated with about 100 they'd have three squads of about 30 people each thir three platoons excuse me of, of of 30 people each with three squads uh, of about 10, 10 people each or probably seven or eight people and then you had the, the platoon leader and the RTO for the platoon leader and, uh, uh, and a, you know, a medic assigned to the. Well, you had QRT teamers or members of the group QRT teamers as well, you know, quick response teams. No, yeah. no, no, no. We, we, you know, so they'd have the four line companies, and uh, they would, they would, uh, you know, they, they would operate. Typically, that's the size uh, um, operation that we would have. They, the the uh, forward uh, position for the battalion, where where most of the battalion would would be stationed, was a was a hill. Uh, LZ Professional uh, uh, was the one we were on. Uh, we were called the Professionals. That's what they they called our unit, and uh, uh, that was a hill out uh, uh, out um, partway towards Laos, west of uh, of Chu Lai again, up in I Corps, a little bit south of Da Nang, uh, and uh, uh, on that fire base uh, would be. Um, of uh, uh, 
battalion of of uh, of 105 howitzers I'm, uh, and uh, uh, and typically one of the line companies would 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 take security on the perimeter perimeter guard and then the other three would be out patrolling um, typically you would go out for 21 days you know and then you'd come back uh, these line companies would have a week on on the fire base uh, in security and then they would go out for 21 days and just keep rotating like that and then the the fifth com uh, company was uh, e company uh, the the echo company and we were made up of a uh, mortar platoon uh, 4.2 uh, inch mortars uh, and and they would be on the the fire base also to help provide mm -hmm. fire Back support yep. for for the guys who were out uh, out uh, um, out in the bush out in the bush and uh, and then the recon platoon uh, reconnaissance platoon and uh, that was uh, what I was assigned to and again I think that was because I had been through ranger school they mm -hmm. thought uh, that was that would be a good fit for me. Um, so uh, I came out, and then I was uh, I was very fortunate to, uh, uh, and these were these were really positive. Some of the positive things that happened is I I did have a, a week of uh, uh, OJT or on the job training where I went out with a, another uh, unit, uh, and I was uh, fortunate to to draw uh, a, a guy named uh, Captain Bradley, uh, who had this was. I, I can't remember if it was his second or third, I think it was his third tour over there. And he had, uh, he had been uh, a, a long range reconnaissance uh, platoon leader. Uh, the, the platoon I was leading, the reconnaissance platoon that I did was more of a short range reconnaissance, again, supporting the area that that the battalion worked in. Okay. You know, we had a, a, a basic area of operation that we were responsible for. Now, did you have to, quote, walk to the places or were you airlifted? A little uh, bit of both. Uh, it, it mostly, mostly we would, we would, we would, uh, we would uh, walk. Uh, okay. Some oftentimes uh, airlifted, which uh, was was one of the things that I had more nightmares about when I got home than anything was uh, was being in a helicopter because I wasn't in control. But anyway, I, I went out with Captain Bradley, and and he had he had done the long range reconnaissance, so he he was uh, extremely knowledgeable. Okay. Uh, we were talking before before the filming about awards and medals and um, he certainly uh, when I left country he was being put in for a distinguished service cross which is just one down from the Congressional Medal of Honor I, I, I hope he received it I'm not sure if he ever did um, but he uh, uh, he was uh, he was a, a, a great officer and uh, I was very fortunate to do my OJT oh, yeah. with him uh, and he uh, he he taught me uh, a lot, and it was good. It was good to get some of that bad stuff out of the way. I, I remember my first night. This was uh, in the uh, the monsoon season up north, where we were started about when I got over there, the end of September, beginning of October, and lasted until um, basically like the end of March, uh, uh, early April. Uh, so uh, my first night there, uh, and again coming from Ranger School, I and I was so determined to do everything I could to stay alive that I, you know, I wouldn't put up any kind of a tent. You know, most guys took a poncho and put it right, up yeah. over the over the top of them and slept underneath that. And I, I didn't want to. You know, I'd heard. You know, well, you got a reflection off the poncho. People, you know, when the Pop, yeah. VC or NVA would take a take a shot at you. So I, I chose not to. <laughs> I woke up in the morning, and of course, the rest of the company was hysterical because I looked like a drowned rat. I was. You know, out there. Here in mud all yeah, exactly, and uh, you know it's good to get that out of the way. Not with the guys you're going to have to, you know, Be give orders to. They'll never <laughs> let you forget. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so it was it was merciful that I that I had. Uh, but it's part of the, the learning experience. Had that week to, to learn exactly, and then uh, then I I, uh, I I would you know took over the the recomplete, and I had one one uh, one mission. Uh, I was supposed to have one mission with the uh, guy I was replacing, um, 
uh, who was, uh, who he had gotten a, a battlefield commission. He had been an enlisted man and mm. had been, uh, had been uh, promoted to uh, a lieutenant, uh, you know, for, for his good service and uh, Craig Taylor. And he, uh, he, uh, um, uh, you know, he went out with me on that first mission. Uh, but uh, I, uh, uh, maybe I'll just, I'll just tell you a quick, hopefully quick uh, uh, story of, the, um, of that first mission and that uh, 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 when I was with Captain Bradley, he had told me that uh, we, uh, you know, that when you, if you left the perimeter, you had to tell everybody around you that if you were a recon, you know, because you would go out with, uh, you know, very small units. He would go out with four or five guys, uh, you know, as few as that. Uh, I, I, I operated down as low as six, but uh, we, we usually carried a little bit more than that. So my first night there, uh, I had heard that um, and uh, uh, it was my turn for radio watch and um, uh, I got up and I, I, I called to, you know, first squad, you know, report, nobody answered. Second squad, you know, nobody answered. Third mm -hmm. squad, nobody answered. And I, and I thought, oh my God, what's going on? I remembered where the RT, I go up to the, to the lieutenant and I said, Craig, I can't, I can't get a hold of anybody. And he said, well, go find Brown, the RTO, you know, he'll, he'll help you out. I go down, I remember Brown had, had uh, slung a, uh, a uh, uh, hammock, mm -hmm. uh, you know, low slung a hammock because the ground was, it was monsoon season, so everything was soaking wet. wet so, yeah. he, you know, so he, and I go over there and Brown's hammock is, is on the ground and no Brown around. You know, and it's like his hammock had been cut. And, you know, I go back, I call again, I can't get a hold of anybody. And I'm thinking, oh my God, we're getting overrun. And I look out and it's just pitch black over there. I mean, you can imagine, you know, you're mm -hmm. the nearest light is, you know, a hundred miles away. <laughs> you know, there's no light, no moon monsoon so it's dark uh, finally a little flare goes up someplace else and I look out and I see this little head you know bobbing around and I say oh my god it's a VC and I grab my one. rifle and I, I you know and I'm debating and I you know I often think about that how close I came to pulling that trigger um, uh, you know I, I, I just was debating in my mind do I just um, take this one guy with me at least because obviously we're, we're, we're getting overrun. And, and I, I started to put the uh, lever on full automatic and I, and I was a good shot by then after all that training and had that, that rifle set on the base of his neck and was just gonna blow, blow, blow his head. And, and luckily <laughs> just before, I, and, and I know I was squeezing that trigger. You know, again, I was, you learn that you don't pull a trigger, right, you, squeeze, you squeeze it slowly so the rifle doesn't move. And I was squeezing that trigger when the radio went off and somebody answered and I realized it was actually turned out to be, uh, you know, a, a, a great soldier, a good friend of mine, Jimmy Maroney, and I was beating down on him. So I, I one of the things I'm most grateful for is I never pulled that trigger because that, that would have been the end of my, my time. Were you there doing the Tet? I know we were, uh, we were there uh, the year after Tet. Okay. So this was, uh, uh, we were in 69, Tet was 68. Uh, we, I was there for a Tet of 69 and we, uh, I mean it's a Tet of uh, 70 because I was, I came over in late 69. Um, and uh, we, we, had, um, uh, we had a very heavy, heavy battle later uh, on that was uh, part of the same type of offensive where they were trying to, 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 to and, and take, take, cut us off to, and take the coast. Uh, and that was uh, extremely heavy filing. That was after I had left recon, was with a infantry company, one of this line that companies. That term you just used, cut us off, do you realize it's almost time to say thank you, good service? But one question, it's silly, but it's important, I think. After all you said and done, and have been exposed to, 
would you consider a positive or negative impact on your life? Oh boy, I, uh, it, that's a hard question to answer. I will say that uh, I am definitely a different person and uh, I think some of that is good uh, and some of it ain't so good. Right, but different. I, you know, again, I, I, it, it's hard to put a value on it. Amen. Uh, it's hard to put a value on it, but, but clearly I came out a, a different person than I went in. Oh, great. Two words. Thank you. And Thank we should you. talk some more, I hope. Okay. Okay? All right. That's a wrap, folks. Short as it seems, time seems to fly when you're here. But it's just one more example of what one guy did, what he went through, and more important, what it might mean to you. Again, before I sign off, I'm asking each and every one of you guys who may be seeing the show or friends of someone, if you have a story to tell and you will share it with us, please get a hold of me. We'll do all we can to make it worth your while. The only thing I can promise you is this. If you do a show and you do, if you will, tell what you did, it'll be the best legacy that you can leave your friends and your family. I'm not hanging crepe with the family. Let's face it, we're fighting the clock and the calendar. Guys like me aren't going to be around much longer. And you guys in Nam and Korea are coming down the pike, you'll be chasing us. But what we're trying to do is make sure that whoever had something to do is carefully and faithfully recorded so that it doesn't get glorified or minimized or forgotten. Again, I thank you. Stay healthy. Please come and see us.